So, um, hello everyone in my uh, MBA 502 class, and uh, it's a Saturday morning. It doesn't look like it's too bad outside, and I hope everyone is well. And I just want to wish everyone uh, who has a uh, who's either a father or has a father um, um, a very happy Father's Day weekend, and I hope uh, everyone enjoys it. Okay, so someone had a question on this problem here. Uh, homework, uh, chapter 7, uh, 4 of 11, B7-3, okay? And uh, it says, you are considering a new plant, and your initial investment is going to be $100 million up front. After that, it is expected to produce profits of $30 million at the end of every year. That's forever, right? You notice it says every year forever. Perpetuity, remember that? Perpetuity. The cash flows are expected to last forever. You see, perpetuity. Calculate. They want the net present value, all right, and they tell you the cost of capital is 8%. Should you make the investment? And the answer is if the net present value is greater than zero, you should make the investment. So we're going to calculate that. And then they want you to calculate the internal rate of return, okay? So um, what I want to show you is here's the solution. Here's the solution. However, they use equations here, and I don't know why they didn't introduce Excel to you, but they should have introduced Excel. So here's the net present value of a perpetuity. The cash flows over your uh, cost of capital minus the initial investment. Okay? So this is the true calculation. All right? Now, uh, you could have done this uh, by hand. And just enter this in the uh, equation bar in Excel. But what I want to do is I want to use Excel and I want to show you how to do it with the Excel built in functions. Okay. So this is how you get the net present value of 275 million. Now it's a rather simple equation and you could have again typed it into Excel. And of course, the internal rate of return is the point where this is equal to zero. So you see they set this here equal to zero. Uh, but you have to keep guessing. You have to keep guessing at this formula, right? And uh, or, or you have to solve for R, and it'll get you 30%, all right? You, you bring up 100 million over here and divide by 0.3. Again, I just want to show you the Excel functions you can use. And then actually, because this is a, these are simple equations, you may find it to be maybe a little more difficult, but it's really not, all right? So let me uh, bring up the Excel here, okay? And show you, I'll show you what I did, okay? All right, so here's a Microsoft Excel. Now, the first thing I did was I, they gave you that rate, right? The cost of capital. So I put it there, and you could format this cell as a percent, okay? So let me just show you something. Let me see if I can get this. So format cells, right? And you see, you could just pick percentage, and it does it for you automatically, okay? And you could add the number of debt. You could change the number of decimal places. Okay. So you could do all kinds of crazy things with the cell. Change the colors, blah, blah, blah. All right. All right. So I did that. Now, the cash flows, one must be a little careful. Microsoft Excel does not use the function that every textbook on the universe uses to calculate NPV. As you know, net present value is the sum of all the positive cash flows and you got to subtract off your initial investment. See, here's the initial investment, right? Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Net present value in Excel doesn't include this. Their definition of net present value is just the present value of all the cash flows, not this. Okay, not the initial investment. So what I did was, if you go to NPV from Excel, which I'll go right here. And let me bring up, see the function right here? And it's A2, which is the, um, they, they ask you for the rate. And I go from, notice I go from C3 to C160. Let me bring that up. Let me see if I can bring that up. So I go from C3 to C160. Now, because they said this is a perpetuity going on forever, I just wrote the cash flows as 160 cash flows. You can go on forever in Excel, but I had to cut it off somewhere. Right, so I said, well, let me just put in a hundred and or well, hundred and fifty-seven whatever cells, right, from C three, and I you can see they're all thirty million, right. So this is how Excel defines NPV, and again, 
they don't include the initial investment all right so now your book your book solution came up with 375 million and you can see I'm off by about two bucks right everyone see that because I didn't I could have added I could have added I'm going to ignore this error because I don't know why it's complaining um, I could have uh, I could have added more 30 uh, 300 millions but I I didn't okay or 30 millions to the end and you can add like if you make it like 200 you'll get real real close so I just dragged uh, the uh, because it's a perpetuity I dragged it down and made like a hundred and fifty seven thirty millions okay so the, the your textbook said three hundred and seventy five million uh, for the uh, now I'm sorry your textbook said two hundred and seventy five million but what you have to do with Microsoft Excel is this one extra step and look what I did I took the number I calculated in Microsoft Excel NPV and I subtracted off the initial value you notice I made the initial value negative so if you you either add it or you just make this positive and subtract it all right but you can see your book is was 275 million and I'm off by about I guess uh, a couple thousand bucks I guess right so uh you know again you could add more 30 millions all right but it's uh or again like i said you can just use the function built that, and i showed you in that solution thing for a perpetuity so anyway this is the textbook npv the way it's calculated uh in uh textbooks and excel does their own thing and i uh, i really don't know why they do it that way okay so here's all the cash flows including the initial investment now so after you get the NPV, they wanted the internal rate of return. Now the internal rate of return is easy. That's just that's what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the IRR function in Excel. You see it right there, and all that is is a drag and drop. Watch what I do. I I pick cell C2 to C160. This time you include the initial investment. Okay, you see that? Let me open this up. And that's all you have to do. You don't even have to make a guess. If you don't make a guess, I think it, it guesses 10% because it's iterative. All I did was drag and drop C2 to C160. See that? And you can see it gave you the answer right there. It gives you the answer of 30%. And if you look on the solution, there it is, 30%. So again, these equations are relatively simple, but they're not so simple if it's not a, um, a perpetuity forever. And you could have, again, you could have programmed these in Excel by putting the equal sign and, you know, just adding these numbers in, and you would have got the exact answer, all right? But I, I decided to use the uh, functions just to show you the functions. All right, so I hope I'm clear, and I hope everyone has a good day. E email me if you uh, still have questions about this, all right? And I'm going to send another email in a little while. I'm going to remove a, a chapter from the final exam, all right? And I'll uh, send that in a little bit after I have a breakfast and another cup of coffee. All righty. Uh, I hope everybody's well. And uh, you may, I, I took, I didn't, I didn't format these into dollars. I don't know sometimes if, uh, if the internal rate of a function is going to uh, uh, accept the dollar sign and the, and the commas. So you may want to try that uh, for this function. Sometimes it, complains about the dollar signs and the commas okay so well, you may want to try you could just format these to currency all right and just the way i did here by the way let me just do that real quick format cells or you could see i formatted those to currencies okay you see currency right there so you could do that all right all right everybody uh that was an excellent question thank you to the person who asked me that all the best